Hi, this is Diana van Giesbergen from Xandria. What's up? This is Parker Jameson from the band Starkill. This is Danny Marino from The Agonist. Hey, this is Carla from La Ventura. I'm Greg Browning from Crimson Shadows, and thanks for listening to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Welcome back, listeners. In our never-ending quest to bring you the most talented, cutting-edge musicians in metal, we're riding through blood and fire tonight to speak with the amazing vocalist for Grave Shadow, Heather Michelle. Heather, welcome to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. Before we begin to talk about the band, could you share a little about yourself, your background, and how you first got into music? Uh, yeah, well, I've always, I, I feel like I've always been into music. Um, it's just progressed from listening to Rappy tapes and Barney songs to listening to metal. <laughs> um, let's see, I have pretty much always been singing. I took my first choir class when I was in, like, junior high, and um, I did a couple choir classes in high school and in college, and um, I didn't actually join my first real band until a few years ago, um, I think I was 21 when I first joined, and now I'm only 25. I haven't been really in the band scene for very long, but I totally love it, and I am super excited to see where it goes. I'm a huge fan of singers who can deliver in a variety of vocal styles. I wonder, how long have you been performing those harsh vocals? I would actually say about the same time. Um since I started joining bands, I um, I kind of encountered a lot of people who wanted more of a male vocal style for their bands when I was trying to get into the music scene, which I totally understand. Like, some bands just require a harder sound. So I thought, okay, well, I guess I'll train my voice to give a harder sound. And so I, I really took a lot of inspiration from musicians like Stu Block, uh, currently of Iced Earth. He was in a, Into Eternity at the time. That guy can do every vocal style you can think of. And so I, I, took, a, I took a page from his book and just um, I looked at a bunch of YouTube videos online about how to learn how to growl from like Angela Gossow and several other random YouTube users. And, uh, and I just kind of gave it a shot. And my first band really liked what they heard, and so I kept going with it, and and now I do the same thing in Grave Shadow. Well, you can't look to uh, two better vocalists for inspiration than Stu and Angela. Uh, oh, those, yeah, totally. Those are too great to model yourself after. Mm-hmm. Well, transitioning to discussion of your band, Grave Shadow, how did that group initially come together? Um, That group initially came together... Um, about a year, I would say, before I, uh, before I joined, um, I believe it came together with our current rhythm guitarist, uh, William Walker, and the former vocalist at the time, Julius Jones. Um, they came together and they had this vision of this gothic symphonic metal thing, and or I think it was more just gothic metal, but then they brought in uh, our our lead guitarist, Matt Mitchell, and the drummer, Roman Anderson, and the symphonic element really got added when our keyboardist uh, was brought into the band. Uh, her name is Valerie Hudak, and um, she's the one that just totally gives the music an overhaul with her amazing uh, symphonic elements that she adds. And um, then I joined uh, about a couple years ago, about two years ago, and... Uh, yeah, that's kind of how we got started. <laughs> and so Grave Shadow's self-titled EP was released in 2013. What was the reaction to that, and what did that recording do for the band? Um, the reaction was really positive. Um, it was really cool because after we released that and people started listening to it, we started getting you know some of our 
fans, uh, like singing along to the lyrics. And so that was really, really cool getting to see, you know, people in the audience singing along. And, uh, yeah, we've, we've gotten really great reactions from the EP and, um, we hope to get the same amount from the album and if not more. <laughs> and so what has happened for the band between that point and recent days when you have been signed to a record label and, and are looking at releasing the new album? Um, well, uh, we released the EP and we continued to just play as many shows as we could. And um, we were fortunate enough to open for the band Flotsam and Jetsam. And that's where uh, we met our current manager. His name's Jeff Keller, and he's super awesome. And uh, he saw us, and he liked us, and he kind of chatted back and forth with uh, Will about um, possibly signing to his management company, and then we did, and that was very exciting. And he's been working away at trying to get, you know, us on a label, and it finally happened not too long ago, which was very exciting. (laughs) That is exciting. So you have this new album set to be released soon in both Europe and North America. Tell me about it. Um, Well, the album is essentially our first EP, but it has three new songs, and they've been totally remixed and remastered. And... I mean, the original EP was was awesome, and it had a it really brought out the heavier elements in our music. But with remixing and remastering those previously recorded five songs, it really brings out the more symphonic metal elements, and so it makes this album more of a symphonic. Um, it, it sounds much more magical, <laughs> if I can say that. Um, sure. Yeah, and so that's essentially what our new album is, and it has totally revamped artwork that looks amazing as well. And uh, we were also, I think one of the things that I'm the most excited about is we were able to get Mr. Ralph Sheepers of Primal Fear to guest vocal on one of the songs. And he did a phenomenal job of it, and I'm so excited to share it with everybody. (laughs) And that, I believe, is the song Blink? Yes, it is. Tell us a little bit about that. I've heard you perform that, uh, seen some YouTube videos of you performing that live. Seems like maybe one of your favorites or one of the band's favorite songs. Uh, tell us a little bit about that song. Well, I really like that song because, I mean, it's it's kind of, an, it's kind of a nerdy song. It's about, uh, it was originally, or it is about an episode of Doctor Who. And... Um, a lot of, or I think everybody at Grave Shadow are total nerds at heart. And so this song we wrote um, based on one of the episodes called Blink. And it's about these like alien creatures that um, like, if you look at them, they can't move, but if you close your eyes, they'll, they'll come and get you. So the message of that episode was don't blink because they, they're that fast. And so that the song um, it features, you know, words like that, like don't blink, don't even blink because they're fast and they're going to get you. And, um, yeah, bringing Ralph on just added a totally new layer to that. And, yeah, it's it's definitely one of my favorite songs of ours. <laughs> well, he's a talented singer, so I'm I'm very excited to hear that version of Blink uh, with, with Ralph on there. You have some other new songs on there, Namesake and mm-hmm. Winter's Come to Call. Um, let's see. Well, Winter's Come to Call, it was kind of my first stab at writing some lyrics that weren't based on, like, a story. It was more about, like, oh, I, I, like, I was trying to uh, be more, um, let's see, write lyrics that kind of came from the heart. And it's, they're kind of typical, like, I was manipulated and I didn't like that, and now I'm angry, but I'm saying I'm not going to be manipulated anymore. So that's what that song's about. (laughs) And um, then Namesake is a really cool one because it was the lyrics were primarily written by our rhythm guitarist, Will. Um, He wrote them uh, based, or um, he's dedicating it to his grandfather. It's... um, there's like imagery of 
like an old king uh, who had this great legacy and he's um, passed this legacy down and um, then this, there's this new heir that's now um, he's wanting to uphold the legacy of his grandfather and it's essentially Will's story and connection to his grandfather but he made it much more poetic and cool sounding so that's also a very personal song for him and it came out really cool and um namesake we actually just finished recording a music video for so that's that's an exciting thing about that song too (laughs) we'll have to have our listeners be looking for that out on youtube soon the remainder of the album are, are songs from that original ep you talked a little bit about the difference in sound. What was the was there a different process in the studio that helped bring out that different sound? Um, let's see. Honestly, I'm I didn't really. I mean, we we would always like get the mixes back once uh, the engineer was done mixing them. But I feel like he kind of just took what we recorded and did his own thing, which is which was awesome because, um, let's see, I'm going to pronounce his last name wrong. His name is Emil Nuzgiet, I think. <laughs> um, he's one of the guitarists for Death Stars, and we wanted him to just kind of go crazy on what we recorded because we knew that he would do a fabulous job and bring his own flair to it. We essentially recorded them the same way that we did the, the first five, and so... I would say that was like the major difference was getting Mr. Emil to do his magic on them. And we pretty much got him back and said, yeah, that sounds awesome. Like a few little things here and there, but yeah. (laughs) Just a new take on some old favorites, I guess. Exactly. Yes. The new album is entitled Nocturnal Resurrection. Where did that title come from? Um, let's see it. Um, Nocturnal Resurrection. There's not really some super cool story to it. Um, We we mostly just thought the name sounded cool. (laughs) Um, We were thinking of, you know, nocturnal night resurrection coming forth from the ashes. Um, We do have a song on the album, and that was on the EP, called Exhumed. And I feel like that song was what really uh, gave us the imagery for the album artwork and for the album name, because the song Exhumed is about... uh, Raising the Dead, (laughs) and so the song Nocturnal Resurrection, I'm not really sure who threw it out there, but we all really liked it, and so we went with it. And as far as that artwork, which I have seen, it looks, I would say, super cool. Did the band have any input into that, or was that something where you all just saw it and said, wow? Um, We we all did come up with that idea together. Um, We were... Um, throwing around ideas of what we would want for the album artwork. And uh, we mostly just said, you know, okay, what it, it would be really cool if there was, like, you know, a lady and she's raising dead. Again, taking from the song Exhumed, we thought that would be a really cool image. Um, like raising a skeleton from the ground and she's in a graveyard. And some of us wanted the skeleton to be a little more gory than others. And so there was discussion on, like, you know, how gory do we want this thing to look? And anyway... Um, then we ended up um, sending it off and or sending our ideas off and what we got back we absolutely loved so we used it (laughs) it looks cool I know that fans are going to be excited about it now Grape Shadow hails from the Sacramento area what is the music scene like out there uh, particularly in terms of the metal genre um the music scene is really cool out here um there's actually I would say a lot of different types of metal um I think there's us and, like, one other symphonic metal band in the immediate area. And, um, but then you have, um, you have hardcore, you have some new metal people, you have a lot of progressive rock as well, or progressive metal as well. Um, It's a very eclectic mix of musicians. And so that mix shows really interesting, but really awesome at the same time. It's a very uh, mixed pot. (laughs) And you are in another band I'm aware of, uh, Helium Prime. What is the difference stylistically with that band and Grave Shadow? Well, Grave Shadow, again, I, I would say that it's uh, considered symphonic metal because of Valerie, our keyboardist. Um, she makes it, you know, again, very symphonic. 
And um, we talk about more, or we sing about more dark themes, like uh, vampires and werewolves and raising the dead. And then with Helium Prime, it's actually a project that I have with my boyfriend, and we both really like um, science, and he loves dinosaurs. And so that is more of a power metal style, and we like to sing about uh, science, either science fact or science fiction. And we incorporate, um, we, we got the idea from, um, well, we both like work at a school and we thought it would be really cool if we could make metal that was somehow educational at the same time. And so that's what Helium Prime is all about. That's a very interesting take. I'd be excited to hear more about that. That uh, <laughs> yeah. could uh, be a, a whole different uh, realm of education, the metal education. Exactly. I mean, it's not like, super educational, but it's just enough to where if you read the lyrics, it's like, oh, I, I didn't know that, but I learned that because I listened to this song. <laughs> Speaking of listening to songs, again, I have seen some of your live performances online and seen that you played most, perhaps all of the songs from the new album already live many times. I did notice that uh, there was at least one song, Liberator, I think it was, that you have performed live that didn't make it onto this new album. Do you all have some other hidden tracks tucked away that are prepared for Nocturnal Resurrection 2? Uh, we do. Um, let's see. A, a lot of them are um, older material that just didn't quite make it onto this new album. But uh, Liberator is actually a, a pretty new song. And we have been playing it just because it's so much fun. <laughs> but uh, I think the next album we are prepared to just start writing away because, I mean, we do have a few songs on the back burner that we could use, but I feel like Nocturnal Resurrection 2, as you put it, um, is going to be a lot of new material, and um, we should start seeing new new songs come out on, on YouTube uh, within the next few months here. <laughs> Very exciting. So yeah. with the release of Nocturnal Resurrection imminent, what are the band's plans for the rest of 2015 and beyond? Um, for the rest of 2015, we um, we have a couple more shows. Um, there's one. Oh, I'm so terrible at this. I know that there's one in November and one in December, <laughs> and um, we'll be playing you in like the Sacramento area. And then uh, for let's see, for 2016. Um, we are hoping, nothing set in stone, but our plan is to tour, to tour the West Coast or even farther if we can get out that far. And But that's what our main plan is for 2016, touring and writing a second album. And for this year, I believe you do have a CD release show scheduled? Yes, that is the one in December, on December 20th. And uh, so if you're in the Sacramento area, come on out and come pick up the new album. <laughs> that should be extremely exciting. Finally, Heather, how can fans purchase music and merchandise from Grave Shadow, in particular this new album, Nocturnal Resurrection? Um, this new album, Nocturnal Resurrection, you should be able to buy it through our website, www.graveshadow.com. Um, you should also be able to buy it through Mausoleum Records. Um, you can go to their website, and they should um, have a place where you're able to buy the new album. And, um, again, if you're in the Sacramento area, you can always just hit us up, and we can come deliver one to you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those are some avenues. And we're also on iTunes and, um, let's see, oh, what's that other one called? iTunes and like Spotify and all that good stuff. I want to encourage metal fans out there to check out Grave Shadow. Uh, go online, listen to just, it'll only take a couple of these songs, even from that initial EP, to get you hooked. A great band, lots of talent. If, if you have any interest in symphonic metal, you will fall in love with Grave Shadow. Heather, thank you so much for joining us this evening on The Great Metal Debate. And thank you so much for having me. It was very nice to cyber meet you. Oh.